Hey guys, Phil here. This is just a quick tutorial on how to set up Home Assistant on a Synology NAS with Docker. I'm going to show you how to set up Home Assistant to have network discovery working. I'm using a DiskStation DS1512 Plus running DSM5. I know DSM6 is out, but I haven't upgraded yet. All the commands I'm going to be running will be on the blog post, which I'll link in the description next to that subscribe button. Now the first step we need to do is log into the web console of our NAS to set up a few things. We'll start off by enabling a setting called user home service. This allows you to access more areas of your Synology file system, which you may or may not use for Home Assistant. So let's go to control panel. I'm going to go to user can hit the advanced tab here make sure user homes is checked next we'll be using ssh to run our docker commands which i'll show you why in a moment so we first need to make sure that's enabled from the control panel again we're going to go into terminal and snmp and we're going to make sure the enable ssh service is checked also just take note of the port number here mine is 22 which is the default as we'll need that when logging in with Putty. Uh, next up, we'll want to install the Docker package from the Synology Package Center. You don't have to install anything extra, it's available officially from Synology. Uh, as you can see here from my menu, I already have the Docker package installed. One important thing that's really not documented about Docker is if you have an open VPN connection in your network settings, make sure you disable that first. The Docker package on Synology won't start if you have an open VPN connection active. You also won't be able to download any Docker images from Docker Hub. So if you have an open VPN connection, you should go ahead and disable that. Now you can see here from the Docker console can be used. I found it to be very restrictive. So we're going to use SSH to install our Home Assistant container. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to use PuTTY, which I'll just restart here. I'm going to log in with the username root, and I'm going to use the same password as my admin account to log in. If you're using DSM6, check the blog post in the description for the commands you'll need to use just to switch users to the root user. Now that we're logged in, we can start our Docker command. There's an explanation of what this command does in the blog post, if you're curious. Just a couple of things to point out. The uh, name flag here is telling Docker what we want to call our Home Assistant image. We've also got the restart equals always flag. This ensures that if uh, for any reason Home Assistant crashes, uh, Docker is going to attempt to restart Home Assistant automatically. Also, if our Synology NAS restarts for any reason, as soon as the Docker package opens up, it'll attempt to open up Home Assistant for us. Now, the important flag here is the net equals host. This will be ensure that net discovery works on our local network. And finally here, we have the dash V flag, which is mounting a volume. So I'll be storing my Home Assistant configuration in my volume one shared Docker has folder. And that's just going to mount to config. And finally, of course, we're telling uh, the Docker Hub image for Docker to run. So let's go ahead and do that. Might take a couple of minutes to download. Obviously, mine's pretty quick as I've already downloaded it. This uh, very long string is just an ID to say we have a new container running. So let's go back to our disk station here. And in our IP address, we're going to change the port 5000 to home assistance port, which is 8123. Let that connect. OK, problem loading page. That's OK. Home assistant might take a couple of minutes. Let's try again. There we go. And straight away, welcome home. And this is the Home Assistant now running on our Synology NAS. Now, while uh, we let that to run, let's open up our 
uh, shared Docker folder on the NAS. We can see we've created a house folder here and all these files here have been created. So we have a database file and this is the configuration.yaml file, which we'll be using to configure Home Assistant. Now, if we go back to our Home Assistant UI here, we can see uh, it looks like most Sonos speakers have been picked up. That's excellent. And one other thing we're just gonna notice here is the update available card. Now, it's saying 0.30.2 is available, which is correct. As we can see here on the Home Assistant website, that is the current version. Now, if we go into information tab here, we can actually see we're running Home Assistant 0.28.0. So why are we not running the latest version even though we just ran this command? When we run a Docker image, we need to tell Docker to fetch the latest version. Now, if you did that for the first time, it would have already done that. Now, when you go to upgrade, when a new version of Home Assistant comes out and you go to upgrade, you're gonna to wanna to fetch the latest image. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, we're gonna first have to stop Home Assistant. So let's run docker stop has, as we named it has here. Okay, Home Assistant is now stopped. And let's go ahead and download the new version of Home Assistant. So to do that, we're gonna do docker pull and basically, it's going to be the same as this part here. In fact, I can just copy that in there. And that's going to take a couple of minutes to download. Which we can see here, it's pulling all of these containers. One of those or a couple of those that have updated from Home Assistant will also be downloaded in. You'll need to do this every time a new Home Assistant version comes out. All right, now that's downloaded, we have a couple more steps to do. We first need to rename our current instance of Home Assistant. Uh, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna do a docker rename has and call it has-old. Okay. That's good. Now we need to grab the same command we used to create Home Assistant with, which I have, I'm just gonna scroll up a few times, there it is. And we're gonna run that same command again. Don't need to change anything, just gonna run it again. Once again, we get a new ID. And let's go back to our browser window. And we'll just refresh this page. And straight away, we can see the new version card is now gone. And we can see our Philips Hue, so our net discovery is working again. And if we go into this information section here, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, which is our version we're now running, and which is the latest version here. So what just happened? We now have two versions of Home Assistant installed via Docker. We have uh, HASS, which is the uh, latest version of Home Assistant, which is this current version. And we also have HASS-OLD, which we are currently have turned off. Now this might be useful if you need to roll back because of a new bug or something that is affecting your home automation. If everything is working as expected, we can go ahead and delete the old version with a docker delete has dash old. Sorry, not docker delete, docker rm has dash old. And now that's deleted. One other point to note is that when we delete a docker container using that rm command, we're not deleting any configuration files for Home Assistant. So we can see here that my Home Assistant files are still existing and we're running fine here. That's essentially it. We now have the latest version of Home Assistant running on our Synology with Docker. All the dependencies needed can now be installed in the Docker as you use Home Assistant and won't need to worry about any Synology supporting a Python package or any of those 
works with Synology, you may run across. From here, be sure to check out the Home Assistant website. There's a ton of things to read here, getting started, components, examples, all great stuff. If you're looking to add a Z-Wave radio to your Docker image on your Synology NAS, be sure to check out my other video where I'll explain how to do that. Cheers.